Today is the 22nd day of the month of Tishrei, otherwise known as Shmini Atzeres. Please make sure to listen to this episode either before the holiday begins or after the holiday, and in this case, this year, Shabbos is over. We'll be continuing chapter 100, discussing the laws of Birchas Kohanim, the priestly blessing, and today we'll be doing paragraphs 11 through 16. Paragraph 11. In order to be included in the blessing of the Kohens, we cannot be standing behind the Kohens. If there is some pressing need why we are stuck there during the Birchas Kohanim, then we will end up being included in the blessing. People in front of the Kohens, however, even if they're off to the side, are always included in the blessing of the Kohens. Paragraph 12. The Chazin, the leader of the congregation, calls out each word, word by word, of the blessing, and after each word, the Kohens repeat the word after him. The Chazan should make sure that he is reading from a sitter in order that he not get confused in the middle. There are three spots during the blessing, after, at the end of each sentence really, where everybody answers Amen to the Kohen's blessing. The Chazan as well could answer Amen. There are three sentences contained within the Kohen's blessing. Before the Kohen say the last word of each sentence, the custom is that they sing a song and the congregation recites a short prayer. You can see this prayer in the Siddur, the prayer book, in the section of Birchaz Kohanim. The Chazan, however, the leader of the congregation, should not be saying that prayer. It would be considered an, inter- an interruption of his repetition of the Shemona Esrei. Paragraph 13. Most prayer books have written along each word of the Kohen's blessing they have like a verse written next to each word. These verses are not meant to be read. They have Kabbalistic meaning. If you want to scan them with your eyes, that's fine, but it's even better just to focus on the words of the Kohen. Paragraph 14. When the Kohens conclude their blessing, the Chazan begins the last paragraph of the repetition, beginning with some Shalom, at which point the Kohens turn around and they once more face the front of the Shul, with their backs to the congregation. There's a short prayer that they say, asking God to again accept this blessing that they have just blessed the Jews with, and to bring it to fulfillment. There's a prayer that the congregation says as well, asking God to fulfill the blessing of the Kohens. Paragraph 15 is a bit technical, with a number of details about when exactly the Kohens should start different parts of the blessing. We're going to pass on this one because it's not practical for most of us. If you are a Kohen and would like to go through with me, then please reach out. Paragraph 16 also is a bit technical, but has a very interesting thing that I want to share with you. Both times when the Kohens turn around to face the congregation, and then when they turn around to once more face the front of the shul, they're supposed to spin around the right, going to the right. So they start out facing the front of the shul, facing east. They then turn around to the congregation, so they face south, and then they end up facing west. They give the blessing. Afterwards, they continue spinning right, I guess they're going clockwise, and they then face north and then east as they turn back around facing the front of the shul. This is because it's an important concept in Judaism that we always give preference to the right over the left. The right symbolizes God's compassion. The left symbolizes God's strict justice. We need both for the world to work properly, but we always want the compassion to be a bit stronger than the justice, so we always give preference to the right. This comes up in many aspects of Jewish law, as well in Kabbalah, in Jewish mysticism. When the Kohens descend from the front of the shul, they should walk backwards as if they're taking leave of an important person. They're taking leave of God, so to speak. When they get back to their shoes, they should try slipping on the shoes without touching them, because touching them would necessitate another hand washing in order for them to be able to finish off the prayers of the service. This concludes today's learning. Have a great day and see you on the next episode.